class, we feel that it's important to know the county that you're serving, um, who you're serving, why you're serving. So we're kind of looking back um, the history of Jefferson County. We want to know where we've been, um, what our county used to look like, what has happened to uh, kind of set up the situation we're in now. Uh, we want to know maybe what we could have done differently, what is uh, not, maybe not the best decisions made, uh, how that influences what we're working on today. We want to look at each service site and see the work that they're doing, how the, uh, they're trying to change what history has maybe left in not the best position. So we see these trends and it kind of makes you wonder where it all came from. You know, what, what about Jefferson County means that we have a worse education system than the state average or even the national average? What about Jefferson County means that we have less employment than the state average or national average or that we've got more poverty or, you know, more people living below the poverty line here? So what, what are those factors that caused that to happen? And so in order to try to figure that out, I think we're trying to take a step backwards and look at how did we get here today? And what led up to where we are now? And so if we could figure that out, and if we can get a better look at the history of Jefferson County, where it's been, what it's seen, and maybe we can better understand why it is now, what it is now, and what we're dealing with. Jefferson City was founded in 1751 and throughout most of its early years was known as Mossy Creek, simply a, a small town driven by not only the power of a, a local waterway, but also the power of the railroad that was nearby. So sometime between 1751 and 2012, we lost our way. We came to a point where we're failing our fellow man. 25% of adults in Jefferson County don't have a high school diploma. Uh, we're failing each other. 11% of Jefferson County residents are unemployed. And part of that question is, how much is due to the loss of industry? How much is due to a redefinition of what society is? How much is due to us leaving our children behind? So thinking about that long arc, with the many stories in between. Hopefully we can bring some clarity to that issue. Magnavox was really uh, the, uh, the big employer here for a long time. Well, Magnavox left primarily, uh, the Jefferson City part of it did, because it was making cabinets. And uh, you don't make cab uh, televisions out of wood and you don't have stereo components, you know, consoles anymore. So uh, basically, uh, technology changed, and what they were making, they didn't need to make anymore. So it uh, it closed down. I, I don't I don't think it's really a good thing that uh, those those larger industries left. So um, I think we need uh, we need some other options of employment. Uh, one of the biggest changes that I remember was when they built the interstate through Jefferson County, uh, where 40 and 81 connect. Uh, it became actually the center of the eastern seaboard. And most of us that were young at the time thought it would be a great uh, asset to the county. Uh, but for some reason, we never really have taken advantage of that traffic. And the other change uh, was the construction of the high school in 1975-76. It uh, brought the county together uh, for the first time. Uh, during my early life in Jefferson County, you were either from White Pine, Dandridge, Jefferson City, Rush Strong, and the four never met. 
except in anger. I don't think we, as a whole, uh, would stand out as a county that particularly values education. Um, and I think that's a, a lot of our, some of our problems are a result of that. And that has affected the way our county educationally has developed. Uh, we seem uh, quite capable of postponing till tomorrow what should have been done yesterday. Um, and how that really affects the poorest among us, I think it does have an effect because public education and education in general is a leveler that helps uh, people who are struggling from struggling circumstances move up economically and, and otherwise. And, and when the, the culture doesn't particularly value education uh, overall, then they are the ones who hurt the most. Uh, we have young people that come here that see no need for education, and that probably represents something in their background. And what that is, I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm not sure that that's changed drastically over a period of time. It probably has changed by numbers rather than percentages. We just have more of both sides. One of these challenges that's come across is urban sprawl. This idea that as 11E became a major part of, of the identity of Jefferson City, uh, that we lost our roots in the, the downtown. Um, that part of town that was right by the railroad tracks, that served as the, the social and business center of, of Jefferson City and, and kept it close-knit. But Jefferson County isn't sitting still on this. Um, on campus, we've got a number of initiatives that, that work not only to address some of the education challenges, but also business development. Uh, Spencer Jones and his class in social entrepreneurship have started a, a local coffee shop, The Creek, uh, aptly named after Mossy Creek, to not only educate business students about how to run their own industry, but also to serve the community. The Bonner Scholars work at eight community sites every day. Uh, Boost is an after-school program with students in the Housing Authority, the Boys and Girls Club of Jefferson County, as well as the Habitat for Humanity Group. As uh, Appalachian Outreach is a, the philanthropic arm of Carson Newman has been serving the community for over 28 years, with a food pantry, a closed closet, a home repair business, uh, and has recently celebrated the opening of Samaritan House, a new shelter for those of us that haven't made it so well. Uh, it's changed a lot through the years um, with the aspect of us having uh, a community ministry program. Uh, before Appalachian Outreach, uh, there was always a, a feeling of town and gown, that meaning there was an over againstness of the town with the college because they always saw the college is trying to be the big dog in town and, and they were always asking for money and, and things like that. Uh, and so when they saw students and, and professors volunteering and getting involved in the community, it really helped change uh, how people felt about the college. And it's been a good relationship. We have a strong base of community volunteers and people who, are, who, are, who feel invested in what we do and they appreciate the college as a result of that. Well, the Bonners uh, represent ones who are going to be, they're going to be with us each week at a certain time generally, and to have volunteers that commit and come back faithfully uh, means a lot to any ministry, and especially if you're working with children or other things uh, like at Samaritan House, they get to know you and they are glad that uh, you're not here today, gone tomorrow because they need some stability in their lives. And so Bonner's committing themselves to one ministry and staying with it um, for a period of time is, 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 a, is a very positive thing. How do we take an institution that has a demonstrated history of service and make service a central part of its identity? That's where we are, and we're living that transition. And we're recognizing that every member of the Carson Newman family has service at their heart, at their core. And all we have to do is give them opportunity to reach out to their community 
and to become part of Jefferson City rather than part of Carson Newman. And that's what we're glad to be part of.